Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, I am Jonathan here at Curto's in Westchester County. I welcome you and bring you good tidings from the land of fire and smoke, or as we call it, the brick pit here high atop Central Avenue on Smoky Mountain. Um, today, it is early September, September 12th to be exact. And uh, man, do I have a story to tell you. I have a post-mortem, I have an analysis, because I did something. I took the step to the big leagues, folks, when it comes to doing the cue. Um, the apex of barbecue, the Mount Everest, the brisket. Yes, the brisket. I, I, I had avoided it for a variety of reasons, but most importantly, um, I just wasn't comfortable with the amount of time that I needed to invest to do it right. Um, brisket is something that you can very easily uh, veer off the path and uh, turn that beautiful piece of steer into something reminiscent of a horse saddle. Um, but I finally decided as we the summer drew to an end that it was time to take the plunge and uh, take my first at bat in the big leagues. Um, nobody is nobody uh, in the world of barbecue and smoking and this and that without having some experience with the brisket. So um, I decided to you do it and my vehicle to ride along this trip is big iron over here, the Memphis wood fire grill. And uh, what I did was I, I took, I combined two recipes, okay. I have, I uh, was going to follow the lead of the sage Steve Reichlin and um, use some of the points that he brings up one of his, uh, I think it's called slam dunk brisket recipe. And also I was incorporating a, um, a recipe that was given to me by one of my customers and uh, a Memphis girl owner himself, Darren who in one of his business trips uh, spent some time in Central Texas and got a, he took a, um, a, a brisket recipe from an ancient Austin-based pit master. If I was gonna do a brisket, I had to go all in. So I got a Packer brisket, that's the whole thing, that's the point, the flat, everything. And uh, it was 13 pounds. 13, 14 pounds, something along those lines, and we did not trim the fat cap whatsoever. Um, took it home, and the first thing we did is uh, rubbed it down with pickle juice. That comes from Steve Reichlin. I did not use mustard as a base, uh, which, is, was, which was his next step. Just did the pickle juice, and then did uh, coarse kosher salt, uh, cracked black pepper, and then the Jake's Grillin' coffee rub, which has some salt and pepper in it anyways, and just slathered that hunk of beef with that. So we had, it was pretty much saturated with um, the seasoning, which will become bark. Um, I let it sit overnight in the uh, refrigerator, and then what I did on a Friday night at 11 p.m., the Memphis, Memphis Pro, not the Elite, was all fired up and ready to go. We set the, uh, the intelligent temperature control at 250 degrees. I didn't do 225, as Mr. Reichlin had, uh, had instructed. Did 250, and I let the brisket in naked, okay? No wrapping, you know, this, that, whatever. Used, of course, the indirect uh, cooking plate, smoking plate, and I let it ride. I let it ride from 11 p.m. that evening till about 11 o'clock the next day. Actually, it was noon, it was 13 hours. Um, opened up the grill. First of all, the temperature was maintained beautifully and um, opened the grill up. Brisket looked quite juicy. A lot of fat had melted off, puddled at the top a little bit. Um, and at that point, I incorporated something that Mr. Reichlin, Darren's recipe from Austin, call it for the Texas crutch right now, the aluminum wrapping and aluminum foil. I did not do that because Steve Reichlin and Aaron Franklin, uh, who you've probably seen on his barbecue show, talk about wrapping in butcher paper as opposed to foil. The reason being is that butcher paper is more porous, so it will not only draw some excess grease and fat out of the brisket, 
but because it is porous, it will allow it to breathe. So um, why is that better than foil? Because foil is actually, I've read in some accounts that foil, because it's keeping all the steam and the moisture inside, that the brisket could actually get a little stewy, a little pot roasty. I didn't want that. So um, I wrapped up the brisket in butcher paper and put it back in for another two hours. So now we're at about 15 hours cooking time. Again, it was at 225. At that point, the brisket was removed in the wrap, in the uh, butcher paper uh, from the Memphis. We were done with the Memphis at this point and it was put in a cooler. The one thing I did not do in the cooler was I did not uh, lay towels on top of it, which I will do next time. But I laid it in the cooler for about an hour, maybe even two hours, and then it was time to bring it over to mom's because she was having a barbecue that day. And I, I didn't know how the brisket was going to turn out. I mean, it looked beautiful. You can see some pictures right now. Brought it over there. We cut it. I think I actually didn't mess up in the way that I cut it because I couldn't see the uh, score marks that the butcher had put in there for me. The bark was too thick. But aside from that big fat cap that you still see there, which we cut away and which by um, extension then cut away some of the bark, um, I received rave reviews for this. I was stunned. I was stunned. You can even see, um, watching the video here, that I have the, uh, the smoke ring as well. Not the most pronounced smoke ring, but it looks pretty good for a first time brisket uh, maker. So all in all, it was a success. People were raving about it. My kids loved it. Everybody else was there. And by the way, the picanha was awesome as well. And I will be making that and talking about that at a future date. But um, the bottom line is, is that, you know, why did I use the Memphis for this first cook of the brisket, which is so easy to screw up? And that is really the key here. It was too easy to screw up. I almost had to idiot proof myself, okay? And if I went down the road, and one of my other barbecue buddies in the Brotherhood of Smoke, as we call it, said to me, oh, come on, Jonathan, you got to use the Kamado for this. You got to cook over live fire. And here's the reason why I didn't want to do the Kamado, okay? Because the fact is it had to cook overnight, all right? And I had to go to bed. I did not want to run the risk, because it's happened before, where there could be a temperature spike in the Kamado, potentially from fat dripping down, maybe getting on the coals. Um, so... I wanted it just to be as simple as possible, and I knew that if I put it on the Memphis, it was set it and forget it, we were just going to dial in the temperature and it was going to ride. Um, I knew that in the Kamado, there might be a chance that there could be a spike and I wasn't going to be there to manage it. And quite frankly, when you see what I spent on this brisket, there was no way I wanted to run the risk of ruining it um, overnight. So it was a hit. Was it perfect? Hell no. There's a bunch of different things I would do to it. I would slather it in the mustard. I would use the towels in the cooler afterwards. There's a few other things as well, which I won't bore you with right here. And I want to thank Big Iron over here, the incomparable Memphis Wood Fire Grill. There is nothing like cooking over wood, folks. Damn good product. If anybody wants a Memphis Wood Fire Grill, we ship all over the country. We are actually the main dealer in the metropolitan New York area, so come on into Yonkers and visit us, or just hit us up online, and we will ship anywhere in the continental United States. Free shipping, hell yeah. Thank you. Questions, Jonathan at Peace.